Welcome back guys, I trust you've been staying safe. Today was when the final verdict in the case of Charlie Adelson was passed. And unfortunately for Charles Adelson, he was found guilty. This verdict really devastated him. You could see it clearly, the way his antics were, his movements were, and the fact that you could see the defeat on his face. So, as of today, the 6th of November 2023, in Tallahassee, Charlie Adelson or Charles Adelson was found guilty of murder, conspiracy, and solicitation in connection to the 2014 orchestrated demise of his former brother in law by name Dan Markell. The guilty verdict came after seven days of rigorous testimony and three hours of deliberations. Like I was saying, you would see that Charlie Adelson was just taken aback. It seems he felt that the testimony he had put across and the defense he and his team were peddling was going to be sufficient to get him acquitted or maybe even the case thrown out at all and that he would actually be seen as a victim and maybe based on that additional charges might even be leveled against his ex-girlfriend Catherine McBanois and the other two accomplices of hers. As it stands now, per this verdict, Charlie Adelson will face a mandatory life sentence for the first degree murder conviction and Per this, Charlie Adelson was now the third person tried in the murder of his former brother-in-law, law professor, and also the fourth person to be convicted in that same crime. Adelson's ex-girlfriend, Catherine McBanois, and hitman, Sigfredo Garcia and Luis Rivera, are already serving their prison time for the murder of Dan Markell. Now, McBanwa, just like Charlie Adelson, had denied any involvement in the murder for her part. She actually turned state's evidence once she was convicted and sentenced to life in prison. Per this, Catherine McBanwa then testified against Charlie Adelson, who was her former boyfriend and actually conspired with her to bring in these hitmen and end the life of Dan Markell, his former brother-in-law. Mind you, all this is because of the divorce between Charlie Adelson's sister and his then brother-in-law, Dan Markell, and the fact that after that divorce, there seemed to be a heavy child custody contention in court between his sister and his brother-in-law. And some way, somehow, this was how Charles Adelson felt he could tip the odds against Dan Markell, his brother-in-law, and tilt the odds in favor of his sister. He felt taking the life of his brother-in-law was the way out. That is so unfortunate. I don't know how people come up with this, sleep through it, and see through to executing it. I just don't get it. So. As it stands now, McBanwa actually testified against Charlie Adelson last week and said that she wasn't promised anything for her testimony against him. She was hoping for a reduction in her sentence. And I think that this is more about the case of no honor among thieves. I believe that Catherine McBanwa, you know, she had already lied during her trial. So she, this was her sort of going back on what she had said to change the story to now flip on Charlie Adelson and testify against him. And she's saying that she was doing this with the hope of getting a reduced sentence. So it's as though, okay, I have been sentenced. You are on the outside, still enjoying life. And now you are in hot water. So if I can flip on you and get my sentence reduced, it's a win of a sort for Catherine McBanwa. 
I don't know if she would get that though. Because I think that her lying to the state in itself is also another offense that could be considered in question any consideration that they may have been having in place for reducing her sentence due to the fact that she had sort of cooperated in testifying against Charlie Adelson. I don't think she'll get that reduced sentence she's hoping for, but hey, I'm not the law. So, unfortunately for Charlie Adelson, after seven days of rigorous testimonies and proceedings, Florida Jewels heard testimony from himself where he was claiming that he was innocent of the Florida State University law professor Dan Markell's murder and was rather a victim himself of extortion. Now the jury on Monday decided that he was guilty on all charges in his former brother-in-law's 2014 shooting death because the story he was peddling was just not solid, you know, it wasn't flying. Now, the prosecution and defense went back and forth during the closing arguments before the jury in trial judge, Stephen Everett, finally would come in. So the prosecution sought to reiterate its position that Charlie Adelson, a dentist by trade, had the money, the means, the wherewithal, and the connections through his then-girlfriend, Catherine McBanois, to solicit and carry out the murder of the father of his nephews and the ex-husband of his sister, Wendy Adelson, amid a child custody dispute that deeply upset the family matriarch, Donna Adelson. With this, the Chief Assistant State Attorney, Georgia Kappelman of the Second Judicial Circuit in Leon County, also then said that Adelson's testimony about being an extortion victim of McBanois after the shooting with the notion that the Miami-based Latin Kings members, Sigfredo Garcia, who is actually the father of McBanois' children, and the gang leader, Luis Rivera, would end Charlie's life if he didn't pay them a third of a million dollars within 48 hours. Now, the Chief Assistant State Attorney General was saying that this story actually doesn't hold water because it was such an elaborate and complex story. Mind you, Garcia, Rivera and McBanwa are already convicted and sentenced to prison for that murder. Now, those cases actually established that Garcia and Rivera had traveled from Miami to Tallahassee and, and then they followed Dan Markel as their target dropped off his sons at preschool, went on to the gym, and then pulled into his garage on the 18th of July, 2014. From this point, Dan Markel would end up fatally being shot and losing his life. So prosecutors then told jurors that Dan Markel was adamantly opposed to his children being moved to Miami. Though his and Wendy's divorce was finalized a year before his untimely demise, it was highly emotionally charged and the litigation continued afterwards. So they were saying that in looking at who might have a motive to end Dan Markel, law enforcement had actually learned that Markel was entangled in a very nasty divorce with his ex-wife who is the defendant's sister, and her name is Wendy Adelson. Now, during closing, Garcia, or Georgia Kappelman time, sorry, again advanced the argument that Adelson's testimony about being extorted almost immediately after the Markel murder was really un unreasonable. And I agree with him, because it doesn't make sense. If these two wanted to extort people, then why would they even decide to end the life of Dan Markel? They, they could have extorted him because he had the money. They gained nothing from ending his life. Mind you, you, Charlie Adelson, had actually not put any hit on him or had not entered into any form of agreement 
with these two heads bent to go and take out your bad idea. So what motive would they have to sit down and say that, okay, we are going to get rid of this guy and then go to Charlie Adelson and extort him money for getting rid of this guy? It just doesn't add up. I think Charlie Adelson was trying so hard to sell himself off as a victim. That was the only way he saw or his defense team probably saw he could beat this or maybe beat it and get a lesser sentence instead of being sentenced to life. But I think that the story, like the prosecution were saying, is just too complicated and it's not believable actually. I don't even see how he would be able to prove anything that he's saying. Meanwhile, there are other evidences pinning that he is the mastermind because he actually started suggesting putting a hit out and, and even comparing the price of a TV he bought for his sister after the divorce as a divorce gift to the price of going in for a hitman. So I think that this guy had actually implicated himself and it didn't do him any good that his then girlfriend, Catherine McBanois, had also now turned to snitch on him, sort of. So it, it was just unfortunate. And when he was asked if he agrees that most often the simplest explanations are actually the truth. He said, yeah, he has heard that before. And then he was asked if his explanation was the simplest explanation. At which point he, he actually went on to tell the prosecution that his explanation is the truth. But well, <laughs> anybody can say that. I think that this case has traveled some time from 2014 through to 2023 that is about nine years roughly and i'm happy that finally that markel's memory and his family have found some justice i don't know if this should end it because i was discussing with some friends of mine and they were wondering why his wife was also not charged i think maybe it's because none of the evidence was pointing directly to her or maybe investigators didn't find anything that made her look like a suspect. I don't know. But I think that she would have been investigated and maybe probably she was cleared of any suspicion. That's how come she was not charged. But hey, like I said, I wasn't part of the investigation so I can't speak for them. But it is what it is. But then I think that there is another part of the conversation that people are not looking at. The kids. This is how it is now, uh, what, how things have played out in court today. It means that their dad and their mom separated. Their dad was fighting over them with their mom. And then their uncle got up and hired some hitmen to take out their dad, just so their mom and her family can have them. I don't know, but I feel that this is so odd. This is a very bad position to put the children in. And they may be young to an extent to fully appreciate the brevity of this, but you can bet that as they get old, they will begin to appreciate these dynamics. Because the internet never forgets. This is going to be there. And I'm sure their mom and her family may try to explain away or whatever, but the truth has a way of coming to the surface despite several attempts being made by people to push it underground. And if they ever get to meet Charlie Adelson, their uncle, imagine how they will feel towards him, knowing very well that he probably had a hand in the verdict, he had a hand in the demise of their father, that their uncle denied them their father. This is a very heavy thing. I don't know how the family will move on. I don't know how Wendy will move on with her, her kids. I don't know how the matriarch, Donnie Adelson, will move on because all this seems to have escalated so fast because of the custody contention and the pressure to move the children to Miami against the will of their dad. It's so unfortunate that something that starts as beautiful as a marriage and a wedding and in situations like this. This is uncalled for and like I said in my last video on this, if you are ever part of a marriage, 
be it that you are a member of the family of any of the spouses, please don't just represent at the ceremony and have fun. Bear in mind and hold yourself accountable and responsible that you have a role to play in letting the marriage work. If ever you are in a position to speak to an issue on the marriage, please come from a place of objectivity and wisdom, not selfishness and antagonism and contention and bias towards your family member. It doesn't do anybody any good as has played out here. I pray that the kids will find a way to move on and I hope they are getting the emotional and traumatic support that they need. Because although their dad passed in 2014, all this trial has stretched it up. And you can imagine what they are going through. Just go to the comment section, say something nice to these kids. What do you think? Do you think that the prosecution and guilty verdict of Charlie Adelson should end this? Or you think the police should keep digging because there could be more to this? I think they should keep digging. I think that there could be more to this. I think that when this investigation starts, given that these things are going through chain of people, somebody could try to pull some strings for someone to end the chain and take the fall. So it's very important that the police, although a verdict has been given, still do not lose the case immediately. That's what I think. I think they should just be sniffing around. Somebody might slip up and you realize that, hey, we almost left this guy out or we almost left this person out. As it stands now, Charlie Adelson is due back in court on December 12th for his sentencing. And I'll be following. Once that happens, trust you me, I'll bring you the updates. But until then, subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications, and we'll catch you next time. Keep an eye out and stay safe out there.